Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Nan Yun, Violet Pan, an assistant professor at Computer Science Department at UCLA. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about discourse level na natural language understanding for scientific, lit scientific literature. So from my uh, affiliation in the title, you'll find that I actually am not study uh, genomics and I don't have a uh, background in that area. So probably you have the question, oh, why does this woman even be here? Um, I am a computer scientist and linguist. Uh, the reason I'm involved in this thread of research is back in 2016, we find that there are need for machine reading, which means we use machine and AI to automatically re read the towns of uh, scientific literature to help some critical decision making for domain experts. So one of the motivating scenario we have, and that's what get me into this area, is this molecular tumor board. Uh, so you can see this, um, this image from uh, UCSF, they have this picture taken for actual molecular tumor ball where people form um, a, a, like a, a room of specialists hurdling together and scratching their head together trying to figure out like whether they can have some specific, specific treatment for some patient with specific gene and mutation sequence. So more specifically, uh, the molecular tumor board, their problem is that um, there are many cancer hospitals and there are many cases. So in the U.S. in the year of 2016, there are 1.7 million of new cases of cancer and out of them uh, 600,000 of deaths. And in these uh, hospitals such as Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital alone, they have gene sequence of tens of thousands of people. However, the board can only manually review a few hundreds of them. So this is a very critical, uh, critical scenario where human, can, human expert can really benefit from some of the decision support from AI for precision medicine. So um, as you can see, it's, human experts are facing some of a scalable issue and what do they need for the molecular to support their decision for the molecular tumor board scenario. One thing is the uh, uh, knowledge bot bottleneck. In general, in um, this type of discussion, what they are presented is a tumor sequence. And they want to determine what gene and mutation are important for this particular patient based on their knowledge about all the publications about the precision medicine. And then they need to decide based on this particular uh, patient's gene and mutation sequence, what drug might be applicable. Again, based on the literatures they might have read. So they, they can manually examine all this and determine, but as we showed there are hundreds of thousands of cases and then only maybe hundreds of them can be manually evaluated. So the question here is how can we as computer scientists and AI research help, researcher help in this scenario? So one thing we find that contains uh, a great amount of knowledge is this PubMed. Uh, I think people here are probably familiar with this it's an online repo repository of biomedical literature publications. So there are uh, six, uh, 26 million abstracts um, that translate to two new abstracts every, uh, every minute and over one million every year. So given this amount of information explosion, no expert were able to manually examine all of them and understand the state of the art of the research and what has already been tried, what haven't been tried yet. So here is a snippet I take from PubMed. Um, it's dis uh, discussing some of this uh, cancer related, uh, breast cancer related uh, snipses. So T790M is presented as a minor, minor clone in NSCLC and may be selected for during therapy. This mutation has been shown to prevent the activation of BIM in response to gefitinib, but 
can be overcome by an irreversible uh, inhibitor of EGFR. So you can see just from this um, small passage, uh, I highlighted in colors uh, that we called important entities that are technical terms uh, that usually uh, associated with mutations or breast cancer or drugs. And then there are relations between these entities. For example, this mutation T790M is presented in the breast cancer and as CLC. Um, um, and then there is this BIM is respond to the drug gif gifetinib. So based on this information that the machine can automatically read and extract it so they can construct the um, structured knowledge and then this structured knowledge can be presented to the uh, domain experts and specialists to make their decision about how to treat a patient. Um, so machine reading is a well-established area in natural language processing, which is the field that I'm specialized. In general, the prior work mostly focused on newswire or web, and the type of so the type of uh, machine reading that we're doing is the machine automatically reads the news article or web documents and it extract important entity and relation from them. So one example is it can read news article and understand that Joe Biden is a, a 46th U.S. president, where the entity would be Joe Biden and U.S., two entities, and their relation is, is president. So you can see as analogy, the, in the previous example, we show the entities in the biomedical domain is different from the news domain, where the news domain is usually a uh, person, organization, geopolitical places, whereas in the biomedical domain, the entities that people are usually uh, interested in are uh, gene, mutation, protein, uh, drugs. And similarly, these entities have relations that can be extracted and they are important. So um, as I said, the prior research on machine reading usually focused on newswire uh, and webs, and they extract popular entities and facts and their relations. And in this domain, machine reading is actually easier because there are a lot of redundancies because uh, Joe Biden is a 46th U.S. president. It probably has been mentioned in hundreds of thousands of articles, whereas in the biomedical domain or other high-valued domain uh, like finance and law, there will be little redundancy because people are talking about new findings and research findings. So one drug respond, so one gene respond to certain drug or one mutation respond to certain drug may only be uh, reported once or twice in the article. So these add difficulties to the um, natural language processing tool. This is what get me interested in this domain, which means in order to work on this high value domain, we need to uh, develop more sophist sophisticated natural language processing tools in order to support domain experts to make their decision. Okay. So I hope with this um, broad introduction, I've um, set up the scene about what we're trying to do and what we sort of can help. Um, in today's talk, um, I'm going to talk about three works on machine reading for the biomedical domain. The first one is about cross-sentence uh, NRA relation extraction. Like we showed in the example, we're trying to extract entities and their relation, particularly drug, uh, drug gene and mutation and their relation to see whether certain gene with certain mutation will respond or resist to certain drug or treatment. That can be helpful for the decision support for precision medicine. Um, another uh, work I will be talking about is uh, biomedical event extraction. Uh, where we are extract biomolecular interactions um, as events, and that's also, that's also important knowledge that can help domain experts to make their decision. And then if I still have time, I will briefly talk about the third work, which is discourse tangent 
tagging for scientific evidence extraction, where we're trying to build general tool, tool to delinearize the scientific article such that we understand the structure of introduction, background, method, uh, out, uh, results, and conclusion, so that we know the different part of the article and be able to focus more precisely on the more important part for the whole machine reading process. Okay. Um, let me first talk about this work on uh, cross-sentence uh, unary relation extraction. Again, let me bring back the example that I've shown before. The goal of this work is to extract entities, which is mutation, drug, and gene. And then we'll form a triplet of mutation, drug, and gene, and predict their relation which means whether the, the gene with certain mutation will be resist or responsive to certain drug, then can help the domain expert to make a decision on precision medicine. Um, since this, as I said, is a very important knowledge, people actually are manually create these interaction. There are two known knowledge bases. One is G gene drug knowledge database, the GDKG, Publishing in 2015 contains precisely this information of the triplet and their re relationship. Similarly, there is a project called Civic that is uh, initiated and it's ongoing by Washington University School of Medicine, and they are also manually create this triplet to for precision medicine um, decision support. Again, how they do that this is to have the domain experts manually read through the related uh, publications and articles and trying to manually extract these facts and put it in database. So our question is, how can we help? Is it possible that we can build automatic AI and a natural language processing tool such that we can directly read the articles and extract such information? So there are some special challenges for the current NLP tool. The first thing is here we are focused on NRA relation. NRA means we are focusing on the relation between drug gene and mutation. So there are three entities involved in the extraction. However, in the traditional uh, relation extraction literature in the news domain, because the phenomena is different, usually we're only focused on the relation between two entities. For example, Joe Biden is the president of U, uh, United States. So there are two entities, Joe Biden and United States, and there is a relation is a president of. So in this case, um, the, the extraction is simpler and people have been um, designing some, um, some features such as taking the shortest syntactic dependency path, I will give a little bit more information about what does it mean by syntactic dependencies. Um, it's a NLP jargon. But they design this type of mechanism and features to help the prediction. However, when there are multiple entities that are involved in the uh, prediction, the shortest dependency path is not well defined at all. So we don't know how to utilize these features off the shelf. And another thing is, um, as my title indicated, we're focusing on the discourse level extraction, which means we usually consider a cross a sentence relation, which means these entities will span multiple sentences. And this might not sound like challenging, but in NLP, this is a very challenging problem because in the normal setting, we're usually looking to information within one sentence. And then whenever things go across sentences, there are much more information we need to understand about the relations between the sentences. Okay, so based on all these challenges, what we end up doing is we designed um, a novel neural network architecture as well as a multitask learning framework for this problem. So the setup of this problem is we will take the input of the article, which is represented by a sequence of words. And then we will pass it through some representation learner. And I will give a little more details about this representation learner. But what it's trying to do is it will project these words into low dimensional vectors 
so that similar words will cluster together. So based on these representations, we're trying to predict the relationship between three entities using relation classifier. So we will take the representation of the three entities that we already know, and then we're trying to predict whether they have no relation or response relation or resist relation. Um, so we have innovation in this work on both the representation learner part. We uh, introduce a new uh, novel representation learning uh, model, as well as how to learn the relation classifier. We introduce a multitask learning uh, paradigm. So, can you maybe like explain with maybe an example of this a little slower so people, I think a lot of people here don't have a background in NLP. Like. Sure, yeah, so I actually have an um, example here. Okay, but like the input is, is sentences? Yes, the input is sentence says, for example, the sentence I showed T790M is a uh, small, a minor clone in, uh, in some breast cancer. Um, and then there are some uh, genes that respond to some uh, treatment. And, so, and then you have labels, something like that? Oh, uh, yes. So we assume we have label. How do we create the label? This is another story that I will talk about. Okay. But we assume we have label, so we can do supervised uh, training for uh, classification. So it's a classification problem. Okay, so maybe, I'm just, maybe can you kind of like go back and just explain again what your, like what's the input? Sure. The input, right? Yes, the input will be a uh, sentence. So it will be T790M is presented at a minor clone in NSC, LC. And then we assume we have some approach to detect the, the gene uh, the gene mutation and drug mention. So we know these are, this is a mutation, this is a gene, and this is a drug. Okay, so you have, an article. A, you have like a text which labels all the genes and all the drugs, right? Yes. Okay. And then, and then what do you mean by representation? Yeah, so the representation means we will use neural networks to take these sentences in and then produce a low dimensional vector for each of the words in the context. All the other words, right? All the words, all the words, including the, uh, the mutation, drug, and gene that we're interested in, and the other words that we're not interested in as a byproduct. Okay. okay, so you're taking these sentences, right? And, mm -hmm. then, and then you're learning a mapping between words in a vector space, yes. right? Yes, yes. That somehow captures the relations between mutations and drugs. Exactly, right? exactly. And then... Does that, does that understand? Yeah, so, um, so I think one intuition here is the description of these paragraphs um, actually encoded the information that indicate whether these three things have relations or not, um, have certain relations or not. And then the machine can learn from the labeled example to pick out the, uh, uh, the signals. And I guess so the, the, in the high level idea, right, and kind of the breakthrough in this field is that uh, you realize by making these embeddings, right, mm -hmm. unlabeled text, mm -hmm. right, right? Mm -hmm. you can then get good performance in the small number of labels. Exactly, have. exactly. So in this particular study, we only have a uh, thousand ish uh, instances, sentences that we have. So and we have can learn. Huge numbers of unlabeled text. Yes. With, with, except for where you just know the mutations and the, and the drugs. Right? Yes. Okay. Does that make sense to people? Okay. So, sorry, is the input a sentence or multiple sentences? Multiple sentences. So, it will be a chunk, a multiple sentences uh, chunk. So, how do you actually like, cut up an article so that there's context between the chunks that you have? Oh, yeah. So, we just use a sliding window. So, we'll do like three sentences, three consecutive sentences. We tried to uh, several window size with particular three five are the more focused scenario. But the input is really a word and the and the, the, the text around it, right? But it's essentially the unit is per word that you're embedding, right? Um, 
Yes, uh, I would say uh, the input is really the sentences, consecutive sentences. But we know which words within the sentences. They might be in the beginning, they might be in the middle, they might be anywhere. They might be adjacent to each other, they might be far away from each other. But we know where they are but as then, an input. But then do you embed every word into a space yes. or every uh, we embed every word into the low dimensional space by considering the sentence context. So essentially, we can also have the sentence embedding and so we, we have. We apply it to every word, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, not independently, it's no, dependent. Every word, but in the context. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I hope that clears yeah, yeah. some um, question. Yeah, so. Um, I do have some illustration about the word embedding. How many people here have heard about word embedding? Okay, uh, a good chunk of people. So this is one of the breakthrough in natural language processing where we can map the words into low dimensional space uh, of vectors such that their geometric uh, location will indicate their similarity. So here there are some examples about the words may have different meanings and different clusters in uh, different domain. Like in EHR, there are these um, clusters of vo vomiting, diuretic, uh, heartburn. These are some of these uh, phenomena you will uh, see, and they usually come together when you have certain diseases. Whereas in the usual domain, uh, heartburn not necessarily go with the vomiting or uh, nausea, whereas vomiting, nausea, dizziness are close together. Um, and then uh, similarly for the medical domain, you'll see there are many antibodies like uh, cefazilin, uh, cefoxetin. Uh, these type of antibody will appear closer together. So this is a mechanism that we are using and we also have models to further consider their context so that we can class the words together. So uh, the idea is we take the input texts and then we will convert them into low dimensional space. The word embedding I showed here is static, which means one word have one embedding and it's universal. Whereas here we're trying to learn is, um, is contextualized, which means each word, when they appear in different contexts, they may, may have slightly different embedding uh, based on their meaning. And one example would be alcohol. When it appears in different concepts, it might mean uh, a medicine or it can mean like some people drink the alcohol in some of the EHR, maybe they will record it as so that there are some uh, consequences. So, um, so you can see what we're doing is we take the sequence of words and we pass it through a representation learner to get contextualized representation. And then based on this contextualized representation, we take the representation of the targeted entity, which is drug gene and mutation, and we concatenate them together as features to make the final classification decision. Um, so uh, let's talk about our innovation on the representation learning side. So uh, how many people have heard about long short-term memory network? Okay, quite some. So in general, it's a special type of recurrent neural network that will encode a sequence of input, not individual th things. That's what I'm saying. We're trying to use this mechanism to get contextualized representation for words instead of individual static representation. And then, the, uh, a uh, long short term memory network, uh, the name is like this because it's a special type of RN that uses gates to control the information flow so that it can capture the long term dependency. And the reason we want to capture long term dependency is because in an article, there might be mention of drug and mutation and gene. They may be far away from each other. So we want the uh, representation learner to be aware of the long-term context and learn the interaction between these things for a more precise prediction. So uh, LSTM uh, model is actually uh, invented in the 90s. It's not our 
invention. But uh, these model, they does not, uh, they do not explicitly model the dependencies between the input. So our innovation is um, improvement. That's what we call the graph LSTM that can incorporate the graph architecture into the long short term memory network such that we can have better, even better contextualized representation. So why we want to have graph representation? Uh, so I studied ling ling linguistics. So in the sentences, there are actually hidden structures. So the first sentence T790M is presented as a minor clone in an SCLC. First, something we can do is we can give each token a part of speech tag tagging so that we know T790M is a noun. An SCLC is also a noun. Usually the objects that we care about will be noun. And then there will be some verb. So this is presented as a minor clone. So these are the verb. And you can see these arcs denote the relationship between the words. And uh, we also have a root. So usually a sentence will be rooted by a verb, a major verb. And then all these things that link to the verb are the participant. Um, and as you can see in this diagram, if we are uh, consider the uh, distance between T790M and Gifitnet in the original sequence, they are probably almost 20 tokens away, right? Uh, in the sequence uh, distance. But if we consider the linguistic structure, they actually can be connected very easily because T790M is connected to presented. And presented as a root of the sentence is to connected to shown in the root of another sentence. And shown is connected to respond. And respond is connected to defitnet. So with four hops of connection, based on this linguistic structure, these two entities are connected. So we can see that their uh, distance are much closer and in, with this linguistic structure, we can more easily incorporate these contextualized representation between the entities. So here, um, again, our motivation is to design some of neural network architecture that can encode the complex graph structure that can capture long distance dependencies between the entities so we can have a better contextualized representation. And then uh, the entities are, um, have different types of dependencies. So we also want the neural networks to be able to capture the different types of dependencies, the arcs. Um, so we want a unified model to capture different types of dependencies, long-term dependencies simultaneously so that we can have more robust and comprehensive representation for the final classification task. So how do we do that? I have a simplified version of the previous example where each A or each X is, you can view it as a word in a sentence. They are linked by their adjacency relation uh, denoted by the dotted line. They are also linked by the uh, linguistic dependencies uh, denoted by these uh, solid arcs. Um, our goal is to be able to encode this whole graph structure with one models. Um, and as you can see in this model, there are circles that are denoted by these red circle. And these circles really presented um, computational issue and modeling issue so that um, existing approach cannot easily encode this, um, this context. So, uh, the challenge we face here is how to train a neural network with a Signy graph architecture so that it's still feasible and can get the representation. So uh, we can have a comparison between the chain structured long short term memory network and the problem we're uh, trying to handle, which is a graph uh, LSTMs. Um, uh, as you can see, the chain LSTM is easy to train because um, there is a topological order between the token and you can use a standard algorithm that uh, like uh, back propagation to train this whole uh, neural network. However, in this graph LSTM, as I showed, there are cycles in the, uh, in the entire graph. So there is no topological order between the entities and we cannot use uh, 
the popular bank propagation uh, model to train this neural network. Uh, so there are some existing approach to handle this problem. Usually they suffer from uh, scalability issue as well as uh, the failure to converge. Uh, so in our case, we propose a solution, it's an intuitive solution, where we decompose a, a cyclic graph into two directed asynchronous graph. So we can actually prove any cyclic graph without a self loop can be actually decomposed into two directed asynchronous graph. And then now that we have two directed acyclic graph, what we can do is in these two subgraph, the topological order of the words are well defined. And then we can follow this topological order to do bank propagation and optimize our network. So in general, what we're doing is we have two DAG LSTM, and then we will concatenate the representation learned by both of them. And we take these representation as our features to, for the final classification problem. And uh, as I explained, in these two DAGs, the topological order is well defined and back propagation is easy uh, to apply here to train the neural networks. I have a little bit of mathematical details, but you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think you, uh, you have a very good point. So the question is, uh, when we decompose, there will be an approximation because there will be information loss. That's a correct uh, comment. And then the question is, uh, do we compare it with if we actually do the belief propagation? One thing I want to mention is if we do the belief propagation, there are also um, information loss by uh, some of the uh, approximation because you couldn't really do it through the whole graph. Usually what people do is unroll the graph into n steps. And that n defines how many hops you can look into. So if you unroll it into three steps, then you actually only learn three hop connection between the entities. You cannot learn four hops, five hops. So both of them have um, have their own pros and cons. We, in this work, unfortunately, didn't do the comparison because we're actually, uh, our concurrent work with this other um, unroll approach, it's, uh, this work is done in 2017, so it's concurrent. So back then, we didn't have the, um, uh, the comparison. But I think we basically provide an alternative solution to the unroll. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, I uh this is also a very good question. The um order matters. So we tried we only tried uh two or three types of order. One that the one end up work the best is we mostly follow the sequence order of the word. And so one topological order is from the first words to the last. Uh, it's one, the forward pass and then backward pass is from the last word to the first. And then we add these additional uh, dependencies. Uh, that appears to be the best. We also tried, we take the root of the, the, lead, uh, the tree and then we do a breath, breath first search or uh, deep first search to get to all the uh, the leaves. That's another like from root to leaves, and then from leaves to all the root. That's another topological order we can follow, and that works less well than the sequential order. I think partially is because the language itself is sequential; it has that sequential na uh, nature. That's our hypothesis, but very good question. Thanks. Any other question from the audience? Okay, cool. So, um, so I'll, I have some mathematical details, but I'll skip them uh, in the interest of time. But if you can see the major differences between our, um, uh, our improvement over the channel STM is we now have 
a one word can have multiple uh, precedent, and then we're aggregating the information from them when we define the recurrent unit so that it can uh, memorize all these uh, history and uh, memory. Um, okay, so a little bit, oh, okay, so one last piece. Um, an additional thing after we have the representation learning is we also conduct multitask learning for the relation classification. Uh, like I said, we are focusing on uh, unlawry relation uh, extraction, which means we are trying to extract the relation between drug gene and mutation. Um, and then, um, so uh, there are actually also sub-relations between just drug and gene, or gene and mutation. So we can have these uh, sub-problems. That's how we form the multitask learning. So we can have some pairwise relation between drug and gene, or gene and mutation, or drug and mutation. And then we also have the NRA relation. We can uh, do this classification on all of them. And they will share the same representation learner, which is the graph LSTM uh, layer that we designed. And then they will make a prediction. So a little bit of the result. So we are, again, our domain is a molecular tumor board. And then we are trying to uh, decide the ternary interaction between drug gene and mutation. How do we create the, our supervised data? This is a question that Elazar asked. I think it's a very good question. One benefit of our approach is we use, we don't need human annotation to create data. So we use an approach called distance supervision, which means we take a knowledge base, which has the knowledge base I mentioned, we have GD, KD, and CIVIC. It contains the mention of drug gene mutation and has their relations. What we're doing is we go to the corpus, which is a PubMed Med Central, and we're trying to match the drug gene mutation that mentioned in the uh, document. <coughs> and the high level intuition is when there is a fact in a knowledge base and also there is a mention in the, uh, in the corpus, then it's highly likely this um, relation is mentioned in this article. In this particular case, for example, in the news domain, uh, we have Donald Trump is born in America. So whenever it mentioned, uh, an article mentioned Donald Trump and, and uh, America, we take it as a positive example, meaning we think this sentence is actually reflect the born in relation between Donald Trump and America. As you can see in this example, there are, posit uh, there are the true positive examples. There are also false positive, which means both of entities are mentioned but they don't form the designated uh, relation. So there are some noises, but in our manual examination and also uh, from previous study, we show that usually the signal will uh, outweigh the noise. So we'll uh, take this data set anyway as our training data. So we take the knowledge base of DGKD and Civic, and then we take PubMed Central article uh, to do the distance supervision. We end up with uh, 3,000 paragraphs that have mentioned the drug gene and mutation relationships. Oh, another thing I want to mention is in this particular domain, because we have three entities, it's less likely that there are false positives. So it's more likely that it's true positive in our case. So we get the benefit there. And then, um, as we said, this is a distance supervised uh, setting. Um, so we couldn't do the traditional evaluation, just uh, like take a test set and then evaluate the uh, precision recall F1 score. So what we do is we evaluate the absolute recall sample precision and we also do some automatic evaluation. So the absolute recall, just to say how many distinct drug gene and mutation and their interaction we will be able to extract with our tool. We don't um, consider at this point whether these are uh, true positive or not, just how many things we can extract. And the high level uh, message we have here is DGKD plus Civic are the existing knowledge base that people take years to curate. And there are only uh, dozens of uh, unique drug gene and mutation mentioned and uh, dozens of unique interaction. So machine reading, which means use the machines to automatically do the extraction, we can extract the orders of magnitude more knowledge from the scientific literature. And also, if we consider the cross-sentence case, which means we consider multiple sentences, we actually can further triple the yield. 
uh, from the extraction. So this is a very profitable uh, area that we're looking to. And then, like I said, the uh, sample, pres uh, the, uh, the absolute recall does not consider how much these uh, positive examples are true positive. So what we also do is sample precision, which means we manually sample 150 passages that are extracted by our approach, and we manually examine how much of them are true positive. And as you can see, if we just do the random uh, sample, then less than 20% of them are true positive. Whereas with our algorithm, if we take the confidence um, a score of our classifier to be 0.5, then we have 65% of positive, true positive cases. And if we further improve the increase the confidence to be 0.9, we can have 75% of positive cases out of this. The, yes, so the blue is random, which means you randomly take a passage that, may, uh, that mentioned a drug and gene and a mutation how many times they will have relation. Can you change your algorithm to just sample that at the end? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it's better than random. So here we only do the, um, uh, uh, one thing is for this human evaluation because it's expensive. So we only did the random versus our best model. We don't do the um, linear uh, STM, but we do some automatic evaluation. So this automatic evaluation is, done based on the distance supervised data, which means the data is automatically generated, so it may or may not be fully accurate, but we think it's a good proxy. So you can see graph LSTM improve over the linear LSTM, improve over some of the uh, feature-based approach or CNN and another neural network architecture. Uh, and we also show that and multitask learning can further give 2% of uh, the F1 score again. Um, so uh, I think I'm going over time, so I, I will quickly summarize. Uh, so this work, we basically uh, have a no novel setting for uh, information extraction to support precision medicine, and we uh, designed some novel graph neural networks, as well as a multitask learning framework to learn better and to help uh, uh, precision medicine. Um, and uh, um, <laughs> I think in the interest of time, maybe I will just skip the rest of the, uh, the talk, but I can give a high level idea. Uh, so this second work is to extract a biomedical uh, event. The event means the, um, the interaction of bi biomolecular cells. So for example, there could be express event, uh, and then some of the gene have expression or it can be binding event, which means two proteins have some interaction and they will, they will be binding. So we're trying to extract, automatically extract this event uh, from the article. So again, we designed, so we designed some of the graph neural network architecture in order to incorporate um, external knowledge, knowledge graphs into this learning. So we uh, again have a different novel graph uh, neural network architecture, but it's for different uh, aspects. The previous aspects is to incorporate a syntactic feature. Here is to ex incorporate external knowledge. Uh, but in both cases, we were able to use our novel solution to yield much better results on the benchmark data on uh, event extraction. Um, um, and as I said, this uh, final work is just, um, I, I was putting there as a bonus and decide, I was thinking about not cover it if there is not time. But the high level idea we have here is in a scientific literature, there are uh, what we call the uh, rhetorical uh, structure, which means there will be goal, fact, result, hypothesis, method, uh, problem, implication of each of the pa passage. So this work in the study, we're trying to give these tanks into the article so that we can better denuclearize the goal or this um, uh, structure of the text so that we can have more precise information extraction and machine reading to help downstream task. So to conclude, uh, uh, scientific uh, literature contains rich information for precision medicine and other uh, critical medical decision support 
way designed uh, machine reading approach to extract entity relations and events. We design graph LSTM to incorporate in uh, linguistic structure and de it designed another we call GeneNet to incorporate external knowledge graph into the neural networks to learn better representation. And these models, uh, although are designed under certain, uh, uh, the certain scenario, we believe they are generally applicable for machine, uh, machine reading for other biomedical domain like clinical notes. Um, and uh, the, you can check out my website, all the works I covered have code available uh, online. So if you're interested, thanks. <laughs>